Since social media has made it so that anyone thinks they can be a comedian, a lot of people have now fallen into the trap of saying offensive or untrue things and defaulting to saying that they were joking whenever someone criticizes them, not realizing that just because you joke about something doesn't mean you could say whatever the hell you want, right? And while it's understandable for everyday people to fall into that trap, it's really weird for Saturday Night Live, perhaps the biggest comedy show of all time, to fall into that same exact trap. So what do I mean? Well, Saturday Night Live just made a sketch about the whole Try Guy situation that has been dominating the internet. But if you're not familiar with it, I would recommend checking out my recap right here. It's only like 10 minutes and it goes over everything you really need to know. But yes, the Try Guys' firing of co-founder Ned Fulmer for his affair with the subordinate has been making major waves online for quite a while now. So SNL picking it up is a little surprising, but also not really. Now you might be asking why I'm bringing this sketch up. The sketch received a lot of criticism and was relentlessly ratioed on Twitter for completely misrepresenting how the situation unfolded. And rather than explain how, I'm just going to get right into it and show you. President Biden just reiterated his steadfast support for Ukraine after last night. Sorry, Laura, I'm getting breaking news that the Try Guys have now in fact responded. Okay, first joke, I didn't find the delivery funny, but like, yeah, it, it's pretty accurate, right? It's a little weird that the Try Guy situation received as much press as it did, right? Harmless enough. Let's keep going though. The Try Guys have released an official YouTube video clapping back at ex-Try Guy Ned Fulmer, the wife guy Try Guy. He disrespected the brand by making out with one of the food babies at the Harry Styles concert. Now this is the first instance of a pattern that emerges throughout the entire sketch, which is downplaying what happened. Basically, the entire sketch is of the opinion that the Try Guys overreacted in firing Ned, right? So right off the bat, saying he made out with a food baby at a Harry Styles concert and got fired for that isn't true. He was her boss. He was her direct superior. So that opened the company up to sexual harassment lawsuits since that relationship wasn't disclosed with HR. This literally could have caused the whole company to close down. It's immediately downplaying what happened. But let's keep watching. This is, yeah, it's, it's just surreal. There's a lot of anger on this couch. Get it, guys? Because Eugene being angry that his friend screwed him over is worse than everything Ned did. Ha 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 ha. I'm trying to understand why this story is such a scandal. Was this affair non-consensual? No, worse. He committed the heinous act of having a consensual kiss and not telling us his friends. Already not true. In fact, the only person to say the relationship was consensual was Ned. The Try Guys have not said it was consensual. Ned's partner in the affair has never said it was consensual. Only Ned. There is not enough about the situation out to make definitive statements such as, it was consensual. Like it's really weird to take Ned's word at that when nothing else has been said right? And also the issue wasn't that he didn't tell them. The issue was that he chose to make his brand completely about his wife. That was his contribution to the group and then decided to do this. But no, the problem is the guys who ousted him because he might be an HR risk and opened the company up to a sexual harassment lawsuit. Well, they have egos because they're internet celebrities. Why is that heinous? Well, you have to remember the power dynamics, Laura. He's a try guy and she's a food baby. It's the fact that she is his employee. They work together every day. He signs her paychecks. It is a much more complicated issue than he's a try guy, she's a food baby. Ha, huh, aren't those funny names, guys? Ha, huh, the internet sure is a silly place, right? So the full story is that your friend had a side chick and you fired him? Yes. No, it's not. But there's the third instance of them downplaying what happened for Ned's favor. Of a new cultural revolution. Being cut, led by cut back to us. No. <laughs> yeah, guys, the Try Guys have done everything they can to make the situation about them getting attention. It's not like they kept quiet about it for a month in order to perform a proper review. Like, do you know how long a month is? That's longer than any SNL sketch of the last decade has kept relevancy. And they really haven't done much to publicize the situation. So far, they released a written statement, which 
just announced that Ned was leaving. They made a video statement to better explain what happened. And then they had a podcast episode where Ned and Zach talked about their emotional processing of the situation following it. And then there's the occasional joke on their personal Twitters or TikToks. So that's why it's such a big deal. They lost a quarter of their performing talent. You would think SNL of all people would understand how big of a deal that is, considering they just lost half of their performance talent with Pete Davidson's departure. Due to the trauma we are facing, our editors are working around the clock to remove any trace of Ned from past Try Guys content. Straight up false, he's not being removed from any content that was already uploaded to the channel, as both Zach and Keith said, but sure. This is the battle of our lives. <laughs> Bro. Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce, it's gonna be okay. The problem with the situation wasn't just that they cheated, and wow, look at how for the fourth time, they're reducing what happened. The fact that a man in power pursued a relationship with a woman with whom he had power over. Regardless of if Alex did or did not consent, from Ned's perspective, that was still messed up, especially since HR wasn't aware of that relationship. But notice that they keep downplaying it. It's a good thing that a lawsuit wasn't recently filed against SNL for sexual harassment. That would be a really bad look for them, and they would sure know better than to reduce possible sexual harassment after that, right? Good thing. And just FYI, we are still going to be releasing some previously filmed branded videos. So yeah, you might see Ned in Sweet Green Presents, the Try Guys Try Salad with bugs on top. Why are you guys acting like that was a weird thing for them to include in their statement? Branded content isn't just something you can do whatever the hell you want with. You sign contracts and have deadlines. So if Ned couldn't be removed from those videos, they still have to post those videos. That does seem like a really important thing for them to say in their statement, but okay. Oh, wait a second. SNL writers probably don't understand how business works for content creators and couldn't be bothered to look into it, right? Because God forbid comedians research. I mean, who would do that, right? We're all processing this horrific, violent, and probably racist tragedy. Get it, guys? Because the internet overreacts to stuff and has a tendency to call things racist when they're not. So that means every time something happens on the internet, it's an overreaction. Ha ha ha. There can never be anything wrong or serious as long as it happens online. Ha ha ha. Zach will still be trying super weird Malaysian food. And Keith is still going to try wearing a thong for a week because it's our duty. Maybe you guys should also try making a funny sketch in 2022. I'd enjoy that one personally. Never forget. For CNN, I'm Colin O'Doherty. And they're millionaires. So are y'all. What the fuck? They're millionaires. I guarantee you the person delivering that line either is or will be a millionaire. Wh what does that have to do with anything? I'm gonna go see what Kane is all about. This has been CNN Today. Good night. Random doesn't equal funny. You should have at least had one of the Try Guys say that they were trying Kane for like a video. And then at least it would make more sense that she said that. Saying something random doesn't make it funny. I really, I, you would think SNL would know that. So right off the bat, um, you notice that they happen to make a sketch about this instance of someone being fired for what they determined to be BS reasons. I wonder why they didn't make a sketch about Hartley Sawyer or James Gunn, people who were fired from bigger opportunities for much less. Oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. That's real media, so they don't get to just turn their nose up at it and call it a joke like they can with the internet because they don't understand it. Because that's what I think happened here. The internet is just an easier target for SNL, so they decided to be all boomer because they wouldn't be burning any bridges. And what makes it even weirder is, did you notice the fact that there wasn't even one joke at Ned's expense? The whole premise of the sketch is, wow, the Try Guys sure did overreact. Huh. And it's weird because there were so many obvious jokes to make about Ned. An easy joke would have been, oh wow, if Keith the chicken sauce guy did this, it probably would have been all right. But the one guy whose entire contribution was his marriage? Hey Colin, he's doing those Ivy Leagues real proud, huh? Or imagine becoming rich just by saying that you love your wife and not being able to pretend that that's true. Hell, there's even a lazy colonizer joke somewhere in there that's a lot funnier than the white guy, wife guy, try guy 
joke. Or how about the fact that some guys will drop a few grand for a few nights of fun, yet Ned decided to drop his entire career. Like there were so many obvious jokes, yet not one was implying that Ned did anything wrong. And it is worth noting that Ned had previously bragged about having a friend who writes for the show, and it's actually looking like this friend was the one to write the sketch. So do with that what you will. And I know I'm going to get the comment of, oh, who cares? It's just a joke. Why does it matter that they're getting everything wrong? If this is someone's introduction to the situation, they are now under the impression that Ned is a victim. And thanks to good old-fashioned confirmation bias, it's going to be very difficult for them to ever change their minds. Because all SNL is trying to do is appeal to the lowest common denominator by having the most surface-level analysis of the situation. And you would think by now, SNL would realize that it's a good idea for them to try to appeal to a younger audience when possible in order to improve their viewership. So you have a sketch where only young people know about the situation they're joking about. Those young people have one opinion almost universally, and they decide to make fun of all those young people. Yeah, no, that's smart. That's good business, guys. That was that made a lot of sense. So let's review. SNL widely criticized the guys who held Ned accountable, but at no point criticized Ned at all. They completely misrepresented the situation and got almost every fact wrong about it. And on top of that, it didn't make me laugh once. So they did all of this wrong and weren't even funny, which would at least slightly justify it, right? Aren't segues weird? Well, since you mentioned segues, fun fact, YouTube thinks that across my entire channel, there is one video you're gonna get the most out of and it's gonna appear right here. So maybe check it out after leaving a like, cause what have you got to lose, right? Also, if you wanna hear something funnier than anything SNL came up with, I actually had to stay up until 2 a.m. on Saturday writing a completely different video to be released today just for this story to break and cause me to have to write, produce, and edit this video in just one day. Meaning yes, the sketch did more harm to me than the guy who possibly harassed his employee. Bye.